This is Kelly Hobart from Apaca Direct, and we're here on Tech Think Tuesday, and we are talking about several things. One of them being the cable channel cowl that knit along that Michelle Hunter has been doing with us, and we've been having great fun with that. And it's a home improvement project, and it's a pillow cover, and I am totally enjoying it, especially the. Um, Second homework with the cables was just beautiful. Jim, can you show them these two different projects? Mm -hmm. So we have two different projects here. This is the one from Tara. And of course, mine is sized down and I haven't finished my third week of homework yet because I just started yesterday's week two yesterday because I took the week off because of Easter. By the way, I hope all of you out there had a very happy Easter. I had a great time. I was able to give Evie her little bunny and her entrechat little shrug that I made for her by Lisa Kemery. And it looks so cute on her. She looks so cute. So I was totally thrilled. It wasn't tied anywhere, it fit her perfectly. And it fit just big enough that I think it'll last the whole summer. So I am very excited about that. Matter of fact, I wanna make an adult one. So I'm hoping to be able to do that as one of the projects for next week that we're gonna be talking about. And it came yeah. in handy too. Yes, it came in handy because we walked down to the beach and toward evening time, mommy and daddy had her in her little t-shirt and she was cold. And so that little shrug kept her warm. So it was very cute on her. So it was fun to see her. Also, she had, <laughs> she was at the daycare last week and I, she's just learning how to begin to walk and she got rug burn on her nose so if you see in some of the pictures there's a brown little scab right in the center of her nose <laughs> and that's where she took a fall at daycare so anyways but she's just a delightful little girl and we had a great time spending time with our family and I was able to cook dinner for everyone and it was so much fun I had a great time and it gave me a chance to do a little bit of spring cleaning so I was able to work on cleaning the house and taking care of things at home and it was a great week and that's why I didn't do all that much knitting because I was busy working on the house but uh, oh and I was also working on another project but it was a crochet project and it's gonna be for some upcoming slippers that we'll be talking about next week and Brittany she is one of our staff members here at Alpaca Direct and she has this wonderful pattern. I haven't tested it yet, but I will be testing it before next week. And hopefully we can release it out to you then. Um, but it is a really cool um, crocheted slipper and it has a really nice heel on it. So I'm excited to share that with you this next week. So this week was super, super busy. Yes, Jim? Oh, just there's a bunch of people coming in and they're saying hi. hi. Good morning, everyone. I didn't it's see all nice the to names, have all but. Of you with us. That's yeah. nice to have you. I hope you guys had a great Easter. I see I... Sherry, Kathleen, oh, awesome. Susan. Thank you for joining me. And as we're going along, if you get a chance, can, can you share with every, um, maybe a few people that you know and let them um, learn from us too because we love learning from each other. And if you have ideas for um, making your knitting uh, speedier, um, let us know because nice, uh, those little hints are make all the difference in the world. So those small little changes make a huge difference for us. And I, if you have extra ideas that I can learn from you, please share them because I would love to learn from you too. So uh, as you know, you know, um, knitting for me, is always a journey and learning something new is always what I'm looking for. So I'm always taking things apart and trying to figure out how they go together and how to make something even better than what I have. So this little project that I had, I had to make it smaller because I was making it on my pillow form that's not the recommended size. So I had to change the size and thank the Lord, wouldn't you know, because as a mystery knit along, you don't never know what the next homework's gonna be in. Luckily, I took 26 stitches off of mine because if I would have only took 13 stitches, I would have had to start over. <laughs> it wouldn't have bothered me too much, but it would have set me back a little bit. So I was so glad that the stitch count worked great for the homework so far. And we'll see how it goes for the buttonholes. It looks like I'm gonna have three buttonholes, where on Tara's she has four. And that'll be just great. And Tara was talking to me about how Michelle did the buttonholes on this. And if for some reason you're not able to do the knit along, um, take a look at those buttonholes because if you look really closely at these buttonholes, 
man, they are super nice. And Michelle is known for coming up with great ideas and she has great instructions on how to do it. I think that would be a great little buttonhole to use in different applications too, not just your home products. You know how I look at these different skills and I try to see how could I use this in something else that I'm doing? Because I'm thinking about all these skills as tools in my toolbox and filling up my toolbox with all these tools. So as I'm knitting along, I go, hmm, I'd like to change this. And then I have a whole bunch of resources because I've learned all these different things to use to make something even better or change it just because I like to change it. You know how it is. So also when we were knitting this project, I don't know if you have ever seen this Kenzie before. And this is New Zealand Merino wool with 25% nylon, 10% Angora, 10% alpaca, and 5% silk. And this yarn has the most lovely halo. And I have knit myself uh, quite a few projects with this. And it is wonderful. I love it. So if you haven't had a chance to try Kenzie, I would highly recommend it. It's really nice yarn. What, Jen? <laughs> so anyway, also, I wanted to thank all of our members who just recently completed our sock class. We did a, I, I called it a beginning sock class, but it really wasn't a beginning sock class because it was learn to knit socks. It wasn't necessarily a beginning sock class because we did two socks at a time. We used the magic loop method and oh, we learned how to make our stripes line up just perfectly. See, isn't that cool? And we used the fish lips kiss heel. And the, I have them on a sock blocker so you can see what it looks like. But we had our students, I don't, almost every one of our students was able to complete the sock class. And at the end of when we finished our lessons, they were nearly done with their socks. So I am so proud of them. So thank all of you who did the sock class. I really enjoyed our students. They were so wonderful and kind of stuck with it. And they had to persevere because it, it was a little bit of a learning curve. And they did great. I told them just keep practicing, keep coming in for help. And they did. And guess what? They are, were so excited. They were over the moon thrilled. And I was thrilled because they actually put in a ton of effort. And I love to see that. See people reach and learn more than they thought they could. So it was totally fantastic. Now, also for this last week, we had a couple prizes. And the prize for last week was for a skein of this Kid Silk Haze in the, you guys chose the lilac colorway. So I thought that was awesome. And then for sharing with others, there was this other prize where we had the our new stitch markers and then the smaller size, both large and then small. And then our the little safety pin type stitch markers. And that was one prize. And um, the people who entered to win for that, they had to share, right, Jen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that was awesome. And then for this week, we're gonna have for two skeins of kibasi. I figured it's getting to be summer weather, right? And maybe you can do a little project for the, the little one in your life. And I thought maybe either the pink or purple. So you have to choose what color you like the best. And this one's called Kabasi Plus, and it's by Haiku. And this one is 55% cotton, 16% bamboo, 8% silk, 21% nylon, and it has 177 yards. And this yarn, what I love about this yarn is it's very sturdy, yet it's very soft when it's blocked. So it's a sturdy yarn that you can use for baby items and it is soft and it, it's just a really nice yarn. And so if you want to do baby items or even items for yourself that you want to last and wear well and be soft and cozy, this Kabasi Plus is wonderful. Again, you guys need to help us with the voting. You need to choose either the purple colorway or the pink colorway. And so you choose and that'll be the prize for this next week. Um, now, a couple things that I wanted to write down. So, yesterday I had just started my knitting for today, right? And I got home at maybe 2 o'clock and I had, <laughs> I was 
way back here, way back here. And so I had to knit from here up to here. Well, you know, up to where the, my stitch markers are. And that was a quite a chunk of knitting to do. And it's like, how can I do this and do it quickly and enjoy it? And so I was writing to myself there. I kind of was thinking about what do I do when I get into a pinch? And I don't know if any of you out there, have you ever had projects like that that you waited until the last minute and then you're like, oh no, I have to get it done. So if you guys can share with me maybe what you do to get the projects done quickly and efficiently and still have fun, um, share those ideas so that we can all learn from you. But I wrote down a few things that I thought were pertinent that I always do to make my knitting faster. Number one, I knit continental style. So continental style for some can be faster and um, I really enjoy it. I like knitting that way, that's the way I learned. And, and it, I didn't, I would love to say that I did it on purpose, but that's actually the way someone taught me how to knit. Um, it was Nina Galati. And thank you, Nina, um, because I'm glad that I know how to knit continental style and I can zip right along. Okay, and then the other thing that I wanted to remember is using stitch markers. When I first started knitting, oh my goodness, I didn't know what a stitch marker was, right? So I'd be knitting along and it would say place a stitch marker. So I'd put a stitch marker in there and then I'd get to a different section and it said move marker. Well, I'd just take it and ding, off it goes. <laughs> and then it would say knit to marker. I'm like, I thought you told me I'm supposed to get rid of the marker but not actually the case. What they want you to do is use it like a bookmark and you slip it from the left hand needle over to the right hand needle and keep it in that position. Unless they actually say remove the marker, you're just slipping it from the left hand needle to the right hand needle. But anyway, I love using stitch markers on this particular pro um, project. I'm using our lovely new stitch markers and I love these stitch markers because they are thin I like that they're multicolored and it's a uh, metal coated so it moves sm smoothly on the needles it's it rubber get, actually it's metal it's metal coated rubber no rubber coated metal rubber coated metal yeah. but it's it's so nice to knit with I love working with them because it doesn't get in the way of my needles it doesn't affect the gauge it's wonderful oh also um, for those of you that haven't done the lifelines before, I wanted to, I was thinking about this yesterday and I thought it'd be worth mentioning. See how this white yarn is called a lifeline that I placed in here. So say I was gonna go in here and pl place a lifeline. You have to make sure that you put your lifeline around the outside of the stitch markers. If you do not put your lifeline around the outside of the stitch markers, you have now connected your marker to the stitch markers. And you can see if you knit four inches, and your lifeline is stuck on your stitch marker, or should I say the stitch marker is stuck on the lifeline. You have to redo your lifeline. So that's no good. So make sure that when you're placing your lifeline, do not thread the lifeline through your stitch markers. That would make extra work for you, and it will be a pain on the very next row. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was worth mentioning. And another thing that I like to do to speed up my knitting is I always knit without cable needles. And so if you have not tried knitting cables without a cable needle, I would venture to say that you might want to look at it and see if you like it. Because, okay, so change is not always comfortable, but if you can learn to embrace change and you can tell yourself, I'm going to be uncomfortable for just a little bit while I get used to this skill, Imagine how many things that you can learn, how many more things that you can learn. Instead of saying, I'm used to doing it this way and I'm not sure if I want to change. Well, tell yourself, just try it. Maybe you try it for a week. And if you don't like it at the end of the week, and maybe you try it for three projects, how about that? You try a new skill for three projects, and at the end of the third project, if you still don't like it, then junk it and go back to the way you were doing before. But some skills, even though a little more effort to learn, once you do learn them, 
They're wonderful. You're not at work going, I would love to do cabling, but I never brought my cable needle with me. Let me see, can I use a pencil? Um, how about a paper clip, you know? So you don't have to do that because you don't need a cable needle because you're free. You're free to do your cables without a needle. So I would say, if you see those new skills and you learn those new skills, it gives you more tools in your toolbox. I'm just saying. It's pretty fun having all these resources to pull from. After a while, you're like, I'm not stuck into this little box because I have all these tools that I can use. And so I'm free to create and do things because I have those few extra skills that I took the time to learn. And maybe they weren't that easy, but maybe with flashcards. What about with sticky notes? What if you write your notes on sticky notes, right? Here's a little note that I wrote for myself originally. So I was trying to learn the right twist. That was my skill that I was trying to learn, right? So I said, what is right leaning? Well, that's a symbol for right leaning and that is a knit two together. And do you know that to do a right twist, you knit two together, knit one, and then release the stitches off the needle. So, if you can think about these little memory tricks. Okay, when I was in college, my husband and I met in a memory improvement class, right? Mm -hmm. So we've always been into this kind of stuff. Thank goodness. I mean, I wasn't that great at the memory improvement class. I'll have to say, I didn't see the value of it back then, but I did learn a few skills out of that class, and it, it's still helping me today. So it was worth going to that class. Plus, I met my lovely husband. <laughs> So it was great. So here's another one. This one is the left twist. So what is left leaning? Left leaning, that's a symbol. The SSK is a left leaning decrease, right? So to do the left twist, we slip one as if to knit. We slip one as if to knit. We put those two slip stitches back on the left hand needle. Does this sound kind of similar to your SSK, doesn't it? So you can use that to help you remember these little skills. The left twist is similar to the SSK. The right twist is similar to the knit two together. So in this left twist, we have to knit in the back of the stitches. So you would knit the second stitch, and then you go back and knit two together through the back loop. So I use sticky notes all the time and write myself little notes. <laughs> And I stick them all over the place, huh, Jim? Mm -hmm. My cat, Max, just loves these sticky notes. Matter of fact, this morning, he had, let's see, he had stitch markers, he had one of my plastic bags, he had yarn labels, and he's knocking everything all over the floor and flying around the house. He thought he was in kitty cat heaven. He was helping mama. So that was really fun for him. But, okay, so that's food for thought. Um, also make sure when you're knitting, don't forget to take breaks. A lot of times I will knit and knit and knit. And I can tell you, the longer I knit, the worse I'm knitting. <laughs> I mean, I am more likely to foul things up if I don't take a break. So I would recommend for all of you out there that are knitting, knitting for an extended length of time, number one, take a break. Number two, every few rows take a look at your projects say do the cables look right do i have anything mixed up the reason why you want to take a look is i will see a ton of students that come in here and they knit like five inches of their work and they have a huge mistake right in the middle and they're like can you fix this for me <laughs> i'm like oh my goodness it would have been so much easier if you would have uh, stopped uh, when you were the next row over or something it would be super easy for me to fix it but now that it's five inches down it's a little more challenging so don't do that to yourself check your work and if something needs to be taken out take it out early on don't wait until that's a huge long thing I mean even I've seen people where they block their project and then they find the mistakes I would say take a critical eye, look at your projects, and make sure everything matches and it looks like it should look, right?
So that's important to just examine it. I'm saying uh, if there's anything worth doing, it's worth doing right, right? And taking a little time, a little extra time to make it look more perfect, I don't know. I feel like it's worth it because my time is valuable and I want to be proud of my projects. I don't want to put them out there and then start apologizing for all the mistakes I've made. Not that I should think that anyone, if anyone does make a mistake, do not point the, the mistakes out because 99.99% of the people are not going to notice a mistake unless you, of course, point it out to them, right? So if you do make a mistake, just own it, you know, and quietly smile and don't say anything because most people aren't going to notice it and they're just going to notice all the beautiful work that you did do and all the thought and effort that was put into it. Um, let's see here. Oh, that brings me to a <clears throat> one of our fellow knitters here. Um, her name is Cindy and she has been working on these slippers and she um, came in, she knew that she was off on the pattern and she didn't know exactly what the problem was. She just knew that everything wasn't adding up. And so she had knit quite a ways, maybe an inch or two, and before she realized she had a problem. And then she brought it in. And what it was is she was doing one by one ribbing and she had two knit stitches right next to each other. So it was something as simple as that. And, but, but you know, when you're first learning, it's hard to see. And to read your stitches is, it really is a skill. And it takes a little while. So all of you out there that are beginning, just practice, practice, practice. I like it when our students practice every day if they can, at least a half an hour a day. Because you do not want to be going one step forward, two steps back, one step forward, two steps back. And that's what happens if you don't practice. You forget what you've learned, and then you have to relearn it over and over and over. So if you keep practicing on your skills, you'll improve, and then pretty soon you can read your knitting, and you'll be much better off, right? Um, also, when I was doing my projects, what I like to do, so this is the cabling section. A couple of things I will point out on here. I was checking my stitch count to begin with to make sure that my cables were going to add up and this was actually going to work. And it, it worked out just fine. Thank the Lord for that. And um, then I always use tick marks to um, mark. The, when I'm done with the row, I use a tick mark. I don't use check marks. It's harder to count check marks than it is to count tick marks. So I use tick marks. And don't, don't, t um, you need to knit the whole row and then put a tick mark. Because I can't tell you how many students out there that will go ahead and put the tick mark first and then they start to knit it but the phone rings. And then they think they're on row, they think, oh, I've just completed row three, now I'm on row four. Nope, they haven't actually knit it. <laughs> So then they get off pattern and they're going, I don't know what happened. And that's what happened. And so I would venture to say, make sure you don't take off the row until you actually have completed it. So I'm here, Jim. Can you uh, zoom in on this? See where it says C2FPK2. So these first two, it says cable two. Those are the ones that you slip. So you would slip two, and then you purl one, and then you knit two. So I have the purl one, knit two, because that's the sequence that I'm gonna be following. And I just check this first one right here to see what I'm slipping. Right here, I'm slipping two. Right here, I'm slipping one. Right here, I'm slipping two. Right here, I'm slipping two. I'm slipping one two, and so on and so forth. So I don't necessarily have to look at my abbreviations, see? If you learn those little tricks and you kind of see what the common denominators are and how these work, you can write little notes above your actual project so that you don't have to keep switching your eyes from one to the other to the other, to the other. And the reason why I do that is because if I'm just able to look at my row and I always use 
post-it notes underneath the road that I'm working on. I always do that. And then before I move it down, I would tick it off and then go to the next row. So, oh, this is my little note. What I did is I, on row four on the first repeat, I was starting at 1.30 p.m. And what I do is if I have a time crunch on something, I wanna know how long it takes me to get through 36 rows. So I know exactly how many hours of knitting I'm gonna be knitting. And then I can tell how many breaks I can have in between before um, and, and still be able to finish the project. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if all of you get that technical about things, but it's something that I like to do. And um, so I do that often. Let me look right here and see. Oh, so um, I told you to put notes right next to your cable so you can remember at a glance and don't always have to refer to the key. And that was where I was showing you these little notes that I'm talking about. Is Those are the notes that I put next to my cable so I don't have to refer to the key. All right. And then... Um, I love the continental style of knitting. And also, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is these are the Chowgu Red Lace Needles. And using a really good quality needle with, if you look at this cord, do you see how nice that cord is? It has no memory to it. In other words, it doesn't stay bent or kinked. It'll lay completely flat. That is really handy when you're working on projects. And also, what I love is this metal finish is slippery. So your needles, your stitches will slide across the needles really nicely. Okay, and that helps speed up your knitting. And then the last thing about the needles that help you is the lace tips. For this type of knitting, when you're doing cables and different things like that, these tips really help you. And I actually don't mind these tips. If they get any sharper than this on some of like the collage needles or whatever, can you show them my finger? It's, normally I have a hole in my finger. I have a hole right here in my finger that never goes away. It's like a permanent sore. And it's from clicking the needle back. I use my finger and go like that and push it back all the time and it literally puts a hole in my finger when I'm knitting too often. So having needles that are not super sharp um, really keeps me from hurting myself. There is nothing that hurts worse, well maybe something in your eye, but then having your needle tip go right into an open sore. <laughs> it's like, it'll make you jump off your chair. <laughs> So anyways, I don't know if you all have those kind of problems, but anyways, it's a problem that I sometimes have. So I wanted to make sure and mention to you about our VIP Facebook group. And we have a wonderful group there. If you're looking for some place that you can share your ideas or maybe even get help from knitters who are excellent knitters. And there are, oh my gosh, there are some wonderful knitters on there. And so you should go there. It's free to sign up and then you can post your projects and get help and just um, getting praise from fellow knitters like they're, you know, and helping them. Maybe they see your project, how beautiful it is and they want to make it too. So you're helping to inspire other people. So if you're inclined to do that kind of thing, go to the Facebook group. It's free to sign up. And it's a great resource. So if you don't have a local shopper, you're not able to get into a knitting group. And very often, maybe there's not one in your area or you don't know about one. It's a great way to have, a great way to have an online knitting group that where they totally support you and they're completely, well, there's some really, really wonderful knitters in there. Right, Jim? Mm -hmm. So, and um, so it's a great place for you. And let us know where you're from and what you're working on. And then you'll be entered to win the prize for this week. And the prize for this week is two skeins of kibasi in either the purple colorway or the pink colorway. Either one. This is fantastic yarn. I want to get it in your hands because it's a really nice yarn to knit with. And I'm sure that you'll enjoy it. And for this last week, we have um, this kid cell case. And I used it for my bunny rabbit that I did. And it was a great um, yarn to use. And let's see if we have our winners. Have you liked your bunny? 
Oh, good. I'm so glad. That bunny was so neat. If you get a chance to look at the patterns from Claire Garland on our website, it was loads of fun. I really enjoyed it. I could hardly set it down. And you know what? I used to tell myself a long time ago, I don't like finished work. And guess what? Now, my new thing that I've been saying now is that how can I get my finished work even more perfect? And if it's not exactly right, I just tear it out, try it again, tear it out, try it again. I'm like, I'm going to get this looking really nice. Just wait. I got it. Yeah. And so anyways, it's really fun. So if you get a chance to make toys by Claire Garland, please do. And she often has uh, different patterns on Ravelry that are fantastic. So this last week's winner was Louise Montgomery Carpenter. Congratulations, Louise. You got this Kitzel case. And it makes great halo on uh, knitting projects. It's just beautiful. Or you could use it on your own, on its own. It can stand on its own. But it's a super nice yarn. All you have to do is get in touch with us and let us know what your shipping address is. And we can send that out to you. And so just give us your shipping address. And then, oh, for our bonus winner for sharing our episode with others is Celeste Stevenson. Celeste, thank you for sharing. Thank you for helping us get the word out there. And let us know how you like these stitch markers. We are having these made on our own. As we find products that we would like to uh, uh, have made a certain way, maybe we're not able to find exactly what we're looking for. Maybe we want the stitch quantity to be larger. In other words, you get more stitch markers in a package than the normal. Um, and maybe we're looking for stuff that's really cost effective for you, but high quality. And these are just a couple of our products that we carry. And so Celeste Stevenson, please give us your address and we can get your prize out in the mail to you. And thank you so much, all of you, for sharing with others and helping us get the word out and helping so that we can help each other grow. And that is what I love most, is having people learn and enjoy waking up in the morning and discovering something new and maybe succeeding at something that you thought you couldn't do before. That's so fantastic. And so this next week, we are gonna be talking about some crocheted slippers. And Brittany and I have been working hard on that. And then we are also gonna be talking about the adult entre chat, which is a beautiful shrug. And I believe that I will be making one using that Sueno worsted weight that we had talked about before. I don't have it in front of me right now, but you'll see it next week. So you guys take care, have a great week, and I will see you next Tuesday at 9.30.